Hello everyone. Welcome back uh, in this new lecture series. I hope you all are very well. So previous topic we have discussed a lot of interesting facts about the concept of the origin and evolution of our planet. So many of you have uh, given a very good review that uh, you like the lecture very much. So thank you so much for the uh, for the review and today's lecture it's you can say it is more or less same but today's lecture is little bit uh, technical that is what is inside our planet on that day we have understood that how uh, the planets originate originated evolution what are the process hypothesis theories we have understood today we will understand the concept of some practical impact okay that yes this kind of forces this kind of processes are going on so this topic we will understand today myself pratik chakraborty welcome you everyone in this lecture series that is the interior of the earth part 1 so uh, this is the chapter from the book uh, uh, fundamentals of physical geography so please open the book and if you don't have book you can download the chapter from cbsc website ncert ebooks dot in uh, dot nic from there you can download the chapter so today we will focus on see whenever we are saying about earth's interior okay inside few forces used to takes place okay in in if i say in general for example earthquake is a force okay earthquake is a force after that magnetism okay magnetism is a force after that uh, convectional circulation of heat these are some kind of specific uh, fundamental forces that works inside the earth so today we will discuss about the earthquake quake waves features and concept so i know uh, i think you know that what is uh, earthquake you have a basic idea so what do you imagine about the nature of the earth if i ask you do you imagine it to be a solid ball like a cricket ball or a hollow ball with a thick cover of rocks so if i ask you that what is a earth how you uh, you you look our planet it is simply a hollow from inside or it has something inside in class 8 9 10 you have already Uh, you know solve this issue that no our earth having three important stages inside okay that is the crust mantle and core so first question is clear that it is not hollow it has something layer inside have you ever seen photographs or images of a volcanic eruption on television screen yes you have seen already can you recollect the emergence of hot molten lava dust smoke fire and magma flowing out of the volcanic crater yes you have seen this all the events but the question is that why this events are going on the interior of the earth can be understood only by indirect evidence now you can ask me that sir why not direct evidence the reason is that whenever we are moving inside the temperature is rising hence we can approximately move maximum 3 km next after 3 km if you start penetrating inside the temperature in rampantly rise and it is very difficult for a human to sustain okay so we have to uh, rely on the indirect sources indirect evidences okay as neither as one has nor anyone can reach the interior of the earth so when you, whenever we are talking about the sources so we need information see whenever you used to say that okay today rainfall will takes place so how we can forecast or how we can predict due to satellite satellite is to roam uh, in layer of atmosphere sometime outer layer of atmosphere there are many satellites and they have their purpose so at least we can gather data real time data but for earth's interior it is very difficult to gather real time data but nowadays sensors has been utilized to gather relevant data so sources of information about the interior the earth radius is approximately 6370 km no one can reach the center of the earth and make observation or collect samples of the material under such condition you may wonder how scientists tell us about the earth's interior and the type of material that exist at such depth so many a times you you have heard that okay beneath kolkata there is a uh, uh, we can say that 
माइंस ऑफ डायमंड कैन बी फाउंड ओके डिपॉजिट्स और ओर ऑफ आयरन कैन बी फाउंड तो हाउ साइंटिस्ट कैन यू नो प्रेडिक्ट दिस और हाउ साइंटिस्ट कैन इंटरप्रेट दिस देर शुड बी सम सोर्सेस मोस्ट ऑफ अवर नॉलेज अबाउट द इंटीरियर ऑफ द अर्थ इज लार्जली बेस्ड ऑन एस्टिमेट एंड इन्फ्लुएंस yet a part of the information is obtained through direct observation and analysis of material so when you talk about the sources of the earth there are two types of sources first source is the direct sources so what is a direct source the most easily available solid uh, earth material is surface rock so in surface you will get surface rock and we have we all know that there are different types of rock okay particularly there are three major divisions of rock igneous rock meta uh, uh, sedimentary rock and metamorphic rock so from surface rock we get um, uh, for example in different mining areas in surface etc we get a lot of rocks so from rock also we can determine or we can interpret that yes this place may have this kind of mineral compound or metallic compound or formation there's a good example i have uh, given here that is the gold mines in south africa are as deep as 3 to 4 kilometers i will show you the image going beyond this depth is not possible as it is every it is very hot at this depth beside mining scientists have taken up a number of project to penetrate deeper depths to explore the condition in the crustal portion scientists world over are working on two major projects such as deep ocean drilling project and integrated ocean drilling project the deepest drill at kola in arctic ocean has so far reached a depth of 12 km just imagine these and many deep drilling projects have provided large volume of information through the analysis of materials collected at different depths so this technique scientists are using nowadays drilling inside but it is very much cost efficient not all the countries can you know can do this uh, experiment so what is the another direct source to analyze earth's interior that is volcanic eruption volcanic eruptions forms another source of obtaining direct information as and when the molten materials that is magma is thrown onto the surface of the earth during volcanic eruption it becomes available for laboratory analysis however it is difficult to ascertain uh, the depth of the source of such magma nowadays geologist and geomorphologist they are analyzing magma because lava and magma they used to give a lot of information about the interior of the world now i will show you that how geologist used to get the data in this video so you can see a geologist working this is the lava deposit this is not magma because magma is inside the earth crust when magma comes out it is lava so this geologist taking lava samples see it taking like this it is very much dangerous very much toxic environment and this place is hawaii hawaiian island the active volcano island you all know okay so researchers nowadays studying the uh, reasons of volcanic eruptions they used to collect the samples in different ways okay so like this way they used to collect uh, this kind of sample from here you can see okay so it's very dangerous and very risky so uh, this region contains of approximately temperature is uh, 2000 degree fahrenheit in this entire place so many a times the shoe sole used to get damaged also so they have to have their own precautions and all okay fire uh, suit after that gloves they used to carry like this way they used to uh, collect the uh, direct uh, sources of uh, from the lab okay so uh, like this way the direct sources uh, has been gathered in in the right hand side you can say uh, a mopening a gold mine located at johannesburg south africa is the deepest mine in the world with an operating depth of 4 km still this mining is in operating condition but for very few years only after that the resource there is there will be no uh, more resources okay so this this is one of the deepest man made mines moving on to the next part what are the indirect sources see another source of information are the meteor 
meteor means that coming from outer space that at time reached the earth however it it may be noted that the material that becomes available for analysis for meteor is not from the interior of the earth now you can say that sir meteor to is not a part of earth it is coming from outside then why we should study the reason is that just uh, think about the nebular hypothesis concept what i have told you there there is a father planet or father star from there all the minor planets have been originated so it's a studying of dna in simple language so if i can study the meteor because earth evolved evolution taken place a lot of changes also takes place so if i study the meteorite that coming from outside at least we can know the past yes this kind of mineral or metal was there this kind of changes may have taken place so it is a very good source of data the material and the structure observed in the meteors are similar to that of the earth they are solid bodies developed out of material same as or similar to our planet hence this becomes yet another source of information about the interior of the earth the other indirect sources include gravitation magnetic field and seismic activity the reading of gravity at different place is influenced by many other factors one thing you should remember the impact of gravity in our planet is different in different areas if you go to a oceanic area it will be different if you go to a mountain area it will be different if you go to a plateau area it will be different okay so such differences regional based differences of gravity is known as gravity anomaly gravity anomaly gravity anomalies give us information about the distribution of mass of the material in the crust of earth that means what suppose you are in thar desert there the gravity reading is showing 26 suppose and uh, you are in kolkata and there the gravity reading is showing 126 so what will be a, your pre assumption on this thing a basic assumption should be that maybe beneath the ground beneath the earth iron ore may present because we all know that iron is very much uh, you know uh, metallic uh, sorry uh, very much magnetic in nature it it attracts magnet uh, iron ore so from this kind of perspective also sometimes the gravity anomalies and the study of gravity plays a very important role next part is the magnetic survey magnetic survey also provide information about the distribution of magnetic materials in the crustal portion and thus provide information about the distribution of material in this part seismic activity is one of the most important source of information about the interior of the earth hence we shall discuss it in some detail so these are the three important indirect sources uh, which plays a very important role now let us under understood about the concept of magnetic survey how we can do this thing so you can see this video here okay this video is showing uh, that how magnetic survey used to takes place for magnetic survey it is a technologically devised survey particularly used by geophysicist geophysicist and geochemist to understand what is the chemical composition and physical forces going inside earth so there you can see uh, to find there is a ore or petroleum field whatever it is oil field is there maybe suppose okay so geo uh, that magnetic field plays a very important role so in this video you can see uh, that it is showing that uh, the core you can see and the core generates magnetic field okay due to rotation electric field develops and as the core is semi uh, uh, at the surrounding core is semi solid in nature this electric field transform to magnetic field okay like this way whatever the magnetic properties in in the subsurface area that can be easily denoted by some technological advancement okay so suppose there is a ore deposit it is showing so let me just forward this video for a little bit this is the instrument and this is the main instrument where you can detect the uh, magnetic field okay the display unit gps antenna is there so just divide the earth into latitude longitude like this way when you are uh, moving forward or backward just divide the landscape into latitude and longitude and whenever you are moving you just recording the magnetic field and after this recording you can make a magnetic uh, survey map like this okay and with the help of aeroplanes also this uh, uh, things can be done nowadays okay so this is a kind of example of magnetic survey i hope it is clear 
so till much the, we have understood the concept of direct sources indirect sources and earthquake now we will understood the concept understand the concept of earthquake and earthquake waves see the study of seismic wave provide a complete picture of the layered interior an earthquake is in simple word is shaking of the earth it is a natural event it is caused due to release of energy which generate waves that travel in all direction why does the earth shake it's an important question the release of energy occurs along a fault we have, you have already studied the concept of fold and fault we will understand it little bit later on a fault is a sharp break in the crustal rock rocks along a fault tend to move in opposite direction as the overlying rock strata press them the friction locks them together however their tendency to move apart at some point of time overcomes the friction so what is happening when two rocks uh, plates or rocks is coming together they used to you know uh, they used to do exert force it sometime in opposite direction and sometime is in same direction so the force suppose when the force continues and it doesn't support the limit crosses many a times a sharp break used to takes place and you can say fracture used to takes place due to friction as a result the blocks get uh, gets uh, deformed and eventually they slide past one another abruptly this cause a release of energy and the energy waves travel in all direction the point where the energy is released is called focus of an earthquake alternatively it is called hypocenter the energy waves traveling in different direction reach the surface the point on the surface nearest to the focus is called the epicenter okay so let's understand this concept through a video the earth is shaking you can see here what is going on inside the earth let's see a fracture takes place see a fracture okay a shear fracture takes place so what is happening in the fracture these fractures are uh, pressuring they are giving the pressure okay in the same direction and they are creating uh, you can see a yellow line yellow spot there they are continuously giving pressure and hence what happens a sudden break takes place this is known as focus and this is known as epicenter focus means what from where the pressure is originating the higher the friction started the pressure is originating and epicenter means what where the first waves hit the surface of the earth that is epicenter okay i hope till this much it is clear so this is focus and this is epicenter okay see when the wave hits the earth surface first this is epicenter and focus means the wave is originating that is focus okay uh this things it not important now so i hope till this much the concept of focus and epicenter is clear to you so let's uh, move forward once again that what is focus and epicenter the point where the energy released is called focus and the point on the surface where the waves hit the surface first is the epicenter that's all about the concept next part we are moving is the earthquake waves so we have understood the concept of earthquake what is an earthquake how it is originating and we have understood the concept of uh, focus and epicenter now we will understand the concept of earthquake waves all natural earthquake take place in the lithosphere you will learn about different layers of the uh, earth in this chapter it is sufficient to note here that the lithosphere refers to the portion of depth up to 200 km from the surface of the earth an instrument called seismograph records waves reaching the surface a curve of earthquake waves record on the seismograph note that the curve shows three distinctive section of different types of waves particularly earthquake waves are basically of two types one is the body wave and another is the surface wave body waves are generated due to the release of energy at the focus and move in all direction traveling through the body of the earth that means primarily 
from focus the energy is radiating the waves are radiating okay that is known as body wave the body waves interact with the surface wave and generate new set of waves that is known as surface waves so when the body waves interact with the surface wave they used to known as surface wave these waves move along the surface because when the when from focus the first wave hits the surface it is epicenter and from epicenter all the waves goes into different directions that is surface wave the velocity of waves changed as they travel through materials with a different density the denser the material the higher is the velocity the direction also changes and they reflect when coming across material with different density that means in simple words if the earthquake waves traveling through water the impact will be different the velocity will be different if the earthquake waves traveling through solid rock the impact will be different and the velocity will be different if the earthquake earthquake wave traveling through a semi solid through magma the impact and velocity will be different so this is the nature of earthquake waves and the instrument that we used to uh, record the earthquake waves is known as seismograph it is a cylindrical instrument uh, i will show you later on how this instrument looks like okay so just you can have a look here that how this instrument uh, looks like uh, let's see uh, okay so just i am showing a uh, animation to you that what is the difference between body wave and uh, surface wave you can have a look from here in later class i will definitely make it more impactful this is a wave a normal okay this is a wavy movement you can see particularly the land used to move like this this is primary wave an example of primary wave we will analyze this wave in later ch in the, in our second chapter this is secondary wave okay so this is all about wave and let me show you the instrument of uh, that yes this is a, a seismograph a cylindrical instrument which is recording the uh, earthquake okay this is a seismograph so that's all about today's lecture so today we will understood that concept of uh, earth's interior little bit about different waves and uh, what is the pattern and the tendency of earthquake so i am today's lecture is a more generalized lecture the next two lecture that is coming uh, it will be more uh, applicable that what are the p waves what are the s wave how we can imply what is the nature of this wave these things we can we will understand in the next chapter so your homework is that what are body waves please write the answer name the direct sources of information about the interior of the earth so thank you so much everyone take care and in the next class uh, we will start a new topic till then take care